Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. It's been about six months since we filled my dream reef tank here, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to do a bit of a vlog style update on all the goings on at the tank. We're going to cover pretty much every little thing about it in high level detail, um, but you can post down below in the, uh, the comment section if you've got any comments and I can cover uh, your questions off in a future video. Um, but yeah, just a bit of a tank tour, six months of reefing on this tank. Let's get into it. Now, if you learn in close and careful real listenly, you'll see coral warfare is a thing. There's no escaping it. <laughs> No matter what I do, I always put too much coral in the tank and uh, it's inevitable part of reefing for me. As you can see here, this strawberry shortcake and this toxic green Pasilopora are not friends and have created a trench warfare type scenario going on between them there. From the looks of it, the strawberry shortcake is gonna lose because it's slower growing and not quite as aggressive as the Pasilopora. So it's gonna be up to me to break them apart and I'll move this toxic green Pasilopora you know, maybe one or two inches to the right, uh, giving myself some time and creating a problem for future Marcus, because, you know, fuck that guy. Um, the frag rack, as usual, is absolutely chockers. Um, no matter how many frags I give away or sell, I just inevitably keep adding more and more and more. Um, if you want to know what's on my frag rack, uh, I'll do my best. We've got um, Bird of Paradise uh, on the, the front right there. We've got next to it um, Fairy Lights Montipora. Behind that, Cherry Tree Montipora. And behind that, Phoenix Montipora. Those are all Montipora Danae. Uh, behind the Bird of Paradise, there's some Zoas. I think those are some uh, blue-haired blondides and probably some other ones mixed in there as well. There's some mandarin orange behind those um, Montiporas and an Art of Chaos frag behind that. That's just standard green stylo and blue digi on a frag plug. Behind that, there's a mixed frag with just bits that I knocked off and glued down together, mostly Bird of Paradise and a purple pocky. And then the big red cap uh, in the middle there. Now it does have some flecks of green in it. It is technically grafted cap, but as you can see, I've not done a very good job of cultivating the green. So it's almost entirely gone back to red. Uh, if you know how to restore that or promote the growth of the green, let me know in the comments down below. I'd be very interested to hear what can be done there. Behind that is just straight up green Montipora. Behind that, uh, dying Cyphastria. There's not much left of it. Um, for some reason, Cyphastria is not doing so well in my tank. Um, another frag of Cherry Tree Monty, big blue digi colony, and that um, Duncan frag that I, I made ages and ages ago on, uh, on a video testing out the, uh, the Dremel um, rotary tool as a fragging device. Up on this frag rack, we've got all kinds of acro and SPS and things. So uh, of note, there's pink digi, random acro frags, my home wrecker frags, um, we've got a big bit of Dallas, a piece of Sunfire Monty, some more just nice frags, some Green Goblin and other stuff. Um, most of the stuff up there is not named aside from the, uh, the Home Wrecker and the Sunfire. Oh, there's also a bit of TNT there too. Um, what else? How else is the tank going? Everything's going pretty good as you can see. Um, I've had a little bit of receding on these ACANs just here. I, I'm not sure why. I, I think it, it could either be nutrients were too low in the beginnings or perhaps they're getting too much light on those edges there. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm, I'm desperately trying to hide my scollies in dappled areas because I know they don't want too much light either and they tend to recede if you give them, if you blast them too much. Um, all these SPS frags we've glued everywhere are doing really, really well. You'll see that like we're getting good encrusting down onto the rock. Almost all of them have completely encrusted over the initial um, putty that um, was used to glue them down. 
Um, you know, look at that one. There's none of the putty left on it at all. It's just completely naturally onto the rock now. Um, that one there is brand new and the one behind it is brand new. Only been there for a couple of days. Um, I've moved a couple around as well, but um, yeah, all in all, everything's encrusting really well and I'm super happy with it. Um, I've not lost any, any SPS, which is really, really promising, really good. I've got some new gonoporas. So we've got this glitter goni here uh, and we've got this red with sort of yellowy tips one just behind it there. I got that from Sustainable Reefs. Um, shout out to Shane for hooking me up on that. As we can see, all this stuff here is growing really well. Um, I've filled out this area quite nicely. Um, you know, all this is doing really well. Hammer Garden's looking nice. My big, big bird of paradise colony is not looking the best. Uh, and the reason for that is I hacked it apart. It was just getting way too big. And as you can see, it was starting to die on the inside. And that's just, it was getting too big, too dense, and there was no way to get strong flow in and under and around it. So I took it out, hacked it apart, made a bunch of frags, gave some of it away. Um, and I, I have no doubt that it will grow back into a nice looking shape um, and fill out those gaps left in the colony again. But uh, it's really important to do that when your colonies get really big every once in a while, but you need to kind of go at them a bit ruthlessly. Otherwise, what can happen is that die off in the middle of them can breed dead spots and algae and in the worst case scenario, can lead to a bacterial infection that will take out the whole colony. So you need to be a bit proactive with your really big colonies and just make sure they stay healthy right into the center of the colony as well. Um, which can always be tricky and, and sometimes just requires you to just do some flat out gardening and, and pruning of them to, to just open up the center of the colony again. I'll probably have to do it with this big um, Stylopora colony eventually as well. As you can see, it's getting huge, but because it is all overhanging and branching out, it's, uh, it's gonna be less prone to it than say this colony that's like directly on top of rock work and therefore, you know, more readily able to to create dead spots and, and, and lower the flow. Um, I got a little piece of bubblegum digi there, that's new. Um, I've got plenty of red digi in the tank, it's, it's everywhere, but I've never actually had the bubblegum digi. I don't know, I have this theory that red digi and bubblegum digi are exactly the same thing, and it's just tank conditions that give bubblegum digi the green skin at the tips. But maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, I've never had it. I've been told that this is for sure bubblegum digi and I've been told that this is for sure not bubblegum digi if there is in fact a difference. So let's wait for this frag to grow out and, and once it grows out, we'll see if it still looks different and it can be called bubblegum or if it just turns into the red digi that I've got in the rest of my tank based on my tank's conditions, we'll, we'll see. Um, I've got Dallas growing wildly, as you can see, it's, uh, doing really well and loving life and yeah that's about it for the corals from a fish perspective um convict tang is starting to fatten out which is really good when i first got him that um that spinal line down the side of the fish which you can still see a little bit was really pronounced so he's starting to round out a bit that that line is getting less and less obvious um as he fattens up which is good to see um, i've got uh Two ventralis antheas, there's one of them right there. I've got three golden antheas, there's one of them right there. And there's actually seven dispar antheas in the tank now. Um, I originally got two and then added another five just the other day. And they're all hiding because they're so new in the tank. You can see some of them back there. Um, but given that there's two which have been in my tank for like a couple of months now, and are quite confident, I'm hoping that they'll bring the rest of them out and sort of serve as follow the leader type situation, which Antheas are really good at doing. So it should get them all eating and get them all out in the open and schooling quite quickly. Um, the good thing with Antheas is that when they, they kind of are a monkey see monkey do type fish, when one of them's confident, they all become confident. The problem is when none of them are confident, it can be a bit of a challenge to get them all to, um, 
to, uh, to yeah, come out and uh, start eating. But um, I've got enough anthias in there now that they'll definitely be forming a school and be able to exhibit some of their natural behavior, which should be really cool. Um, what else have we got happening in the tank? I've got this cool hammer here, which I, I'm really liking with the yellow tips. Um, I've moved it around a few times, but I think that's the home that I, I like it, or the spot where I like it. Um, my gold torch is still alive. <laughs> Hasn't decided to melt on me yet, which I, I'm glad about. Uh, I've had horrible luck with gold torches. Um, big Walt Disney colony doing well just there. Um, there's just coral everywhere in this tank, as you can see. Um, but yeah, true mixed reef, starting to become SBS dominant as all these frags start growing out. The green goblins just growing really quickly there. Um, got a couple of ricks there too. But yeah, pretty happy with it. Quick update on the freshwater tank. It's doing pretty well, pretty well. Um, you can see a bunch of the shrimp are out and about, which is good to see. And just this morning, actually, I noticed that there are now baby shrimp in here. And I'm not gonna be able to find any on camera for the life of me, I'm guessing. But they're really, really small. And I counted about 10, which means there's probably way more than that in there somewhere. But um, yeah, the, the shrimp have started breeding, which is really exciting. Uh, Really looking forward to seeing what colors they are as they um, as they get bigger and, and exhibit more color. Right now, they all just look a bit pretty pretty small. Um, I've had a little bit of green hair algae, as you can see, some of it's growing on the um, the wood a little bit. So I've lowered the lighting cycle a touch, um, but for the most part, the shrimp seem to be eating it all, which is is good, keeping it under control. But yeah, a few extra water changes, which only take me five minutes on this tank, and um, lowering the lighting schedule should be all it takes to, uh, to solve that. The red root floater has grown really well. And uh, just about a week ago, I trimmed all of this um, back as well. And then you can see it's already almost ready for another trim. It grows so quickly. But yeah, it's really low maintenance, really enjoying this tank. All the air plants that I've got up on the top there um, are doing really well too. So down below in the sump, everything's humming along. Um, starting from the left-hand side here, we've got um, CO2 scrubber that's hooked up into the skimmer. We've got this reactor here, which uh, has just got the um, aquaforest bio life fill media, whatever it's called, um, and that's doing fine. Uh, it's just a bacteria house, basically. Um, we've got the abyss and the two Shago titanium heaters, uh, the big Aqua Aero max spec skimmer, which uh, is really, really good. I'm very happy with this skimmer. It's silent, it's easy to clean the cup. It's got a float valve in the cup as well to prevent any overflows, pulls out really good skimmer. Yeah, just perfect set and forget type skimmer. Um, my algae scrubber, it's doing really well. I'm cleaning it out about once every 10 days at the moment. Um, you can see it's off right now because it runs mostly at night but you can see the screen is just covered in algae so it's almost probably due to be to be cleaned um, the roller mat it's doing okay um, but for whatever reason it keeps pulling off to the side on my tank and uh, yeah we've not been able to solve what's causing that yet um, and yeah so we'll I'm working with Eric but we'll, we'll figure it out eventually I'm sure um, but that's all right. Just got some bacteria house media in this final chamber as well. Um, moving over to the other side. This is where a lot of the real technical stuff is. We've got calcium reactor and calc wasser stirrer. Um, all of my ATO duty is being fed by this calc wasser reactor. Um, the calcium reactor is currently running at 16%. Um, which is about 1.36 litres an hour, according to the screen there. Um, that's automatically controlled by the Core 7 and KH Lab, which does my alkalinity testing. So if it does an alk test and sees that my um, 
DKH has dropped, it'll increase the speed of the effluent flow, or if it's um, risen, it will decrease the speed of the effluent flow. So fully set and forget, all I need to do is make sure this big canister here is always topped up with the reagent. And as you can see, it's getting pretty low, not a lot left in it. So I'll have to do that probably today, actually, top that back up. For trace elements, I'm using four channels on the Core 7 to dose the four bottles of Reef Anabolics Trace. Um, this is just a bit of um, uh, two-part. So this one's the alkalinity, this is the calcium. Um, as you can see, this isn't hooked up to anything. This is hooked up just to that single channel doser that I have sitting on my UV reactor there. Um, and it's dosing about 20 mil a day just to top off a bit of extra alk. I find my tank is chewing alkalinity quicker than it um, chews calcium. So I just have that dosing a little bit extra to just top everything off with the extra alk. Uh, that's quite common in tanks with a really active algae scrubber because algae growth does consume alkalinity, but it does not consume any calcium. Um, that red reactor back there which is plumbed off my manifold, is running carbon, and now it's actually got GFO in it as well. And that's because I finally have nutrient readings in the tank consistently. So um, about a week ago, I had a nitrate test of about 5 ppm, and I had a phosphate test of 0 0.1, which is actually a tad high. So that's why I added some GFO. Um, and a couple of days later, I tested again, and it was down to 0 0.05 for the phosphate, which is bang on about where I want to maintain it. So um, we're no longer ultra-low nutrients. I'm no longer running 0, 0, um, which I never wanted to be. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll see that reflected in, you know, some really good coloration in this SPS as it all starts growing out and should prevent any further receding on LPS, which definitely doesn't like an ultra low nutrient system. Um, I'm still feeding the tank absolutely heaps. So in the fridge here, we've got these bottles of the Aquaforest range of liquid foods. Um, so I've got the, the brine, the mysis, the rotifers, the veggie one here. Um, so the way these work is you just take out a bottle, take off the cap, give it a shake, and it's just squirt, squirt, squirt. Simple as that. I put in just three quick squirts and all the fish go nuts for it. I just alternate them. I'll probably feed my tank three times a day, um, picking a different one of these bottles every time. And um, I'll also feed flake in the mornings and at night as well. Um, I, I use the, the Vitalis Marine Flake and Algae Flake mixed together. Um, and I'm also mixing in a bit of the AF Protein Power as well, because I find this is really good for Antheas. Um, so yeah, the tank's getting fed heaps. Um, and constantly, which, you know, is how I reef. You know, I want high nutrients in, high nutrients out. Now my big yellow tang here and my purple tang there are not exactly what I would say the best of friends. Uh, there is a bit of aggression between them um, with the yellow tang primarily being the aggressor in this case. It's not um, impacting them in, the t in terms of um, either of their health because both of them are eating really well. The aggression tends to be in between feedings as opposed to when there's food in the tank. They tend to ignore each other. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not ideal. Um, hopefully with the ad recent addition of the convict tang and all of these extra antheas, it's going to sort of break it up a bit because it'll be more of a community tank and just a lot more busyness with fish swimming around to to sort of give them more to think about than just necessarily going at each other all day, every day. But one strategy I found quite successful in alleviating the aggression is the addition of this mirror. So I just have this mirror sitting on the side of the tank just here. 
and the yellow tang tends to um, like to fight his reflection in that mirror fairly often, which definitely takes a lot of the heat off the purple tang. It doesn't work for everyone. Um, some people have luck with the mirror, other people don't. Another thing you can do is literally just print out a picture of a fish, like if it's the yellow tang, for example, print out a picture of the yellow tang and, and tape that to the side of the tank as well. Um, some people have had luck with that too. But yeah, if you are trying to mitigate some tang aggression, um, there's a couple of strategies you can try. Um, but ultimately, I think the best thing you can do is just have the right mix of fish in the tank and um, create more of a community style tank that any aggression is gonna be um, uh, sort of uh, diffused amongst lots and lots of fish rather than just having two fish as prime targets and going at each other all day every day um, so yeah well I may have to add another tang to um, to really kind of get that balance right in the future but for now I'm not too worried about it because as I said everyone's eating and the convict tang's putting on weight the purple tang is fine and a, a really a really aggressive eater so um, yeah they're all doing well even all these anthias, are, which are only brand new in the tank, are eating pretty well too. So yeah, that's this is how the tank's looking after just six months since we filled it and added all the new rock work and transferred everything across and added all this new coral. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'm happy with the way everything's going. We haven't had any major losses or any major issues, which is really good. Um, if you've got any questions, please post them down below. Hit the subscribe button as well, really helps out the channel. Anyway, that's all for now. My name is Marcus, and you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.